Once again, warm-up number 48 is on the screen, and it reads uh, for numbers 1, or number 1, it reads complete the square and factor. And they give us the binomial x squared plus 20x. For number 2, it says simplify square root of negative 64. Okay. Uh, number three, it says add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And they give us two binomials, i plus 2 and i minus 7. For number four, it says uh, find the inverse function f inverse of x for the given function f of x. For part a, they give us the function f of x equals x minus 1 over 5. And for part B, they give us f of x equals 1 fourth x minus 1. So, uh, like I said, this shouldn't take you more than four minutes. Copy that and. All right, let's see. Number one. To complete the square first, what do I need to add right here? Um, Diego. I add what? Help him out, Jaden. 20 over 2 and squared. Yes, that is correct. That's how we complete the square. And to write it out, one simplified, it's x squared plus 20x plus 100. Why 100? 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 squared is 100. All right. Factors are x plus 10 squared. Since Ethan is here and interrupted my class, number two, Ethan, square root of negative 64. You want me to the i? Okay, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, plus minus square root of, I don't know. I, plus minus i, no. I don't know. Uh, i square root of, Hey, hands if you got that. That is correct. Thank you, senor. Have a good day. Bye. All right, addition. Let's see. <laughs> hands if you got 8i. Hey, Put them on the spot, you see. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> addition for number three. What'd you get for number three? Leo. What? Combine? And then combine. Should have gotten negative 5 plus 2i. Hands if you got that. That is correct. For subtraction, what did you get for subtraction? Jessica. 9. Hands if you got that. That is correct. And once again, for subtracting, don't forget to distribute the negative to both and then combine right after. Multiplication, what did you get for multiplication? Um, Leo. Oh, I already picked Leo, right? Okay. Uh, Leo. You love Mr. I was asking. Okay, fine. Pablo, what did you get? Negative 1 minus 5i. Hands, have you got that? Minus 14. Hands, have you got Okay, let's scratch that. Okay, start all over. Go. Negative 1 minus 5i minus 14. So negative 1 and negative 14, that's negative... 15 minus 5i. Hands if you got that. That is correct. And last but not least, division. <laughs> Sebastian G, what'd you get? Oh, I got 1. 1 plus 9 over i minus 7. 9 over i minus 7. Hands, if you got that, that is correct. So make sure uh, you're doing your computation correctly for that.
Uh, number 4A, by now you should be experts at inverses, yes? What did you get for this one? N now, inverse of part A, F inverse of X is what? 5X plus 1. 5X plus 1. Hands if you got that. That is correct. How about part B? Pass someone to Nino. Okay. He didn't finish it. He was uh, working on it. Help him out. Mel. What'd you get, Mel? Fx inverse of 4x plus 4. Hands if you got that. That is correct. Some of you left it over 1, but you can actually simplify it, yes? All right. We good? All right. Agenda. Here we go. What? All right, so let's, uh, let me go over that one. Uh, so y equals 1 fourth x minus 1, yes? Plus 1 plus 1. So far so good, yes? Oh, I know. Y, no, no, let me finish. Y plus 1 equals to 1 fourth x. And then we multiply times the reciprocal. Multiply times the reciprocal. So then distribute, distribute, we end up with 4y plus 4 over 1 equals to x. Exchange the variables. So that leaves us with 4x plus 4 equals y. I no longer need to put it over 1 because it's the same thing. And then we just write this in function notation and we end up with that. All right. All right. Agenda. Warm up number 48. Quadratic equations. And then we're going to solve four problems only tonight. Uh huh. Only four, Mr. Q. Yes. Only four. Itty bitty problems. Make sure you copy the uh, the Nearpot code that's about to come on the screen. And once again, those of you that are following along uh, online, if you're part of our class, uh, make sure you're copying the code. And uh, those of you that are not, if you want to see the rest of the presentation on Nearpot, also copy the code. Here's the code. N S S Z L N F S Z L N F S Z L. Okay. Last night's whole play was the play sheet, yes? Alright, so it's a, a gift from me to you, just extra practice. Aw, thank you, Mr. Q. You're welcome. You're like, and I copied from that guy, my goodness. No, you guys don't copy, right? Good. All right, so tonight's home play, it's only for itty-bitty problems. Number one, read, solve each quadratic equation by graphing square root, factoring in quadratic formula, and they give us y equals 5x squared minus 20. For number two, it says solve by completing the square, they give us 2x uh, squared minus 8x minus 9 equals y. For number three, x squared minus 6x minus 27 equals y. And also for number four, by completing the square and using the quadratic formula, x squared plus 10x equals to negative 16. And you can copy that from your Nearpod presentation, yes? All right, copy the objective, please. Today we're not going to have the, uh, you don't need a graphing paper. You're like, Mr. Q, you're giving us a break. No, because you're going to create your own. Let's go. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our objective for today, I can solve and graph quadratic equations by completing the square and quadratic formula. So today we're going to take a little side step to quadratic equations. And if you remember about three weeks ago, right before we got started with all the, the fun stuff with transformations, right? We did solving quadratic equations three different ways. You guys remember? Oh, yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. So today we're going to add a little bit more to that. Yeah, let's go. So once again, I can solve and graph quadratic equations by completing the square and quadratic formula. You don't need a fair model since you already have the notes on quadratic equations. I just want to revisit to see how your noodle reacts to uh, all this information again. Because, by the way, this is going to be on your semester final, just FYI. You know? All right. So what would be our concept for today, guys? Yeah, quadratic equations. And what are we doing? We're solving and graphing, but we're solving and graphing two different ways. 
by completing the square and quadratic formula. Okay? So check this out. If I was to ask you to get a Fourier model going, which I didn't, but if I was to, you would write your definition in your own words of quadratic equations, right? Tell your neighbor what would be a definition of quadratic equation. Let's see if you remember. What would be a definition? Talk it over with your neighbor. Some of you are like, let me look at my notes before he calls on me. <laughs> Alright, let's see. How about uh, Mr. Q? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a two variable equation, yes? And it's a, uh, a what? Two variable equation with the highest degree of two. You guys remember that? Yes? What do they look you guys know? What do they look like? Like that. Come on guys. Yes? X squared plus three X plus two and so on and so forth. So we don't need that. It, none examples. Tell your neighbor why those are not quadratic equations, please. All right, so uh, I heard uh, they're not equations, and the other one doesn't have a degree of two. Yes, and then I gave you guys some hashtags and so on and forth. You have these notes, okay? Copy this one on your coronal notes. Example Q. Write the instructions, please, because you're going to have one problem on your home play almost exactly like this one. And it reads, solve each quadratic equation by graphing square roots and factoring, and because the equation x squared minus 4 equals y, Copy that. I'll give you some time. Copy and go. All right, here we go. So you have your different color pens, yes? All right, here we go. So to revisit this, since we already did it, and to refresh your memory, I'm going to start with graphing in blue. So I'm going to solve this equation, x squared minus 4 equals 2y, by graphing. So. My question always is, let's say, let's say I drop this period off all of you in the mountains, right? And uh, by chopper, I drop you guys off. There's no way off that mountain. There's no restrooms, water, or food. And then, and there's no phones. You don't have your phones or any form of communication. And at that moment, you need to go poop. So you need to get off the mountain pretty quick. What would you do, the only way to get off if, is you, if you graph this. What would be the basic thing to do to graph that? Talk it over your name. What would be the basic thing to do? <laughs> Somebody said, I would poop on my pants. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pretty good, yes? Somebody said, well, I would make a table, Mr. Q. You've been teaching us that. Very good. Oh, my goodness. The most basic thing to do when graphing is make a table. What domain do I use? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Basic graphing technique is to use a table. All right, next. Why do we need a table? Because now we need to get values for y, so I write this, and I substitute these values for x in there. So what is my first value? Negative 2. What is negative 2 squared? What is 4 minus 4? Very good. Next, negative 1 squared minus 4 equals y. What is negative 1 squared? Minus 4 negative 3. Next, 0 squared minus 4 equals y, which is negative 4. 1 squared minus 4 equals y, which is negative 3. And 2 squared minus 4 equals y, which is 0. Okay. So let's graph that.
So for my x values, I need negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, and 2. How about for my y values? What y values do I need? All the way from 0 to what? To negative 4. So I need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. Okay, let's plot that. Negative 2, 0. Negative 1, negative 3. 0, negative 4. 1, negative 3. And 2, 0. And check this out. And then we point to this one. And we point to that one. Why, Mr. Q? Because those are my solutions. Is it coming back? Yes, some of you? You're like, kind of, Mr. Q. All right. Now, let's look at it through the lens of transformation, since you guys already can see the transformation. So let's say, look up to the screen. Let's say I gave you the original function that looks like this. And this is a transformation already. Okay, look at it. Do we have an A? No. Do we have a parenthesis for H? No. So what is the negative 4? What parameter? K. That is correct. And what is it telling us to do? Four steps down. Take x squared. Four steps. Let's see. Can I go step, steps down? One, two, three. All oh, snap. Yes? Okay. All right. So that's graphing. Piece of cake. I'm going to use red now. I'm going to go to square roots. So let's rewrite this one again. X squared minus 4 equals Y. And we're going to solve by square roots. Here we go. First step is that it's in standard form and that it's equal to 0. Is it in standard form? Yes. It is it equal to 0? No. So let's change that to 0. So it's X squared minus 4 equal to 0. Now we can solve for X. Leave X by itself. So what do I do? Add 4, add 4 x squared equals to 4. And what is my last step if we're solving by square roots? Square root, square root, yes. So this is x equals, what is square root of 4? Positive 2. And what else is square root of 4? Negative 2, yes, plus minus 2. Why, Mr. Q? Well, what two numbers multiply to give me 4? 2 times 2 is 4. What other two numbers? Negative 2 times negative 2. That's where we write plus minus 2. So how many solutions here? 2. Are they the same ones of over here? Yeah, negative 2 and positive 2. And that is by square roots. Next, let's go by factoring. I'm going to use green for factoring. Let's write the equation one more time. x squared minus 4 equals y. Once again, step 1 is in standard form and equal to 0. So standard form equal to zero. There it is. Now let's see, I'm going to take you back to when we did these and we did factoring. I'm going to use green. Can we factor this binomial? You're like, oh, it's not a trinomial. I can't use Power Rangers. I know, but it's a binomial and it's a subtraction. What's another word for subtraction? Difference. Yes, yeah, very good. I heard difference. Difference. And can we check to see if they're squares? Let's find out. Can I take the square root of this one? Yes. Can I take the square root of this one? Yes. If it's a subtraction, that means that I need two of these. One positive and one negative because it's what difference of squares? You guys remember those? Yes? Good. Yes? All right. So set it equal to 0. x plus 2 equal to 0 x minus 2 equals to 0, and we solve. Minus 2 minus 2, x equals negative 2, plus 2 plus 2, x equals 2. So these are my solutions. Yes? Who? Jaden? All right, so question. Do we have the same solution here, here, and here? Yes, why? Because it's the same equation, different method of solving. All right. From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with those? Yeah. 5, 4. Is it coming back? Yes. We did these some three weeks ago. 
So enough of the easy stuff. Ready? All right, copy this, please. Example one. It's a solve by complete. <laughs> Solve by completing the square, and they give us x squared minus 6x minus 16 equals y. And I give you some steps on the right-hand side. Copy those down, please. Number one, read, set the quadratic equation in standard form. Number two, divide the entire equation by the leading coefficient. Number three, eliminate the constant. Number four, add b over 2 squared to each side of the equation. Number five, factor. And number six, take the square root, write two equations, and solve. Copy that. So. Today we're going to revisit this uh, concept of completing the square. We've been doing the practice on the warm-ups, but this is something that we did in Algebra 1. Those of you that were with me, hopefully it starts coming back. Those of you that were not, hopefully you did cover this with your teacher. So here we go. Y'all ready? So, write your utensils down, look up to the screen, please. So I'm going to use a process that I gave you here on the side just to make sure that we uh, have an outline to follow. First things first, it says, set the quadratic equation in standard form. So first, let me show you what standard form looks like just to make sure it mirrors that. Yes, Kevin, right? So it, it reads AX squared plus BX plus C equal to zero. Does this look like this? from highest to lowest degree pretty much except for the what? Zero. So that means I'm going to write x squared minus 6x minus 16 equal to zero and you're just paying attention. I'll give you time to copy. Step one is done. Step two, divide the entire equation by the leading coefficient. Let's see, I'm going to take you back and you're just paying attention. Ready? All right, here it goes. Leading coefficient is, once it's in standard form, is the number that multiplies the first variable. What is that number? Right now it's a 1, so I'm going to divide everything by 1. If I divide everything by 1, I'm going to get the same thing. But that's okay. I'm doing that step so that you don't forget to do that step whenever there's a number there. So step 2 is done. Step three, eliminate the constant. What is a constant? A number that has no variable. What is that number? 16. So to eliminate it, I do the inverse. That means I add 16. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Then I get x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave an empty space equal to 16. Copy up to right there. We are finished with steps one, two, and three so far. All right, as you're finishing the, the last notes, let me go through the process one more time. I was given the equation first, and I checked to see if it was in standard form. That means from highest to lowest degree and equal to zero. This was not. It was equal to y, which means I need to change it equal to zero. That's why I rewrote it equal to zero. From there, step two, divide the entire equation by the leading coefficient. What is the leading coefficient here? One, so I divide everything by one, and it gives me the same thing, which is fine. Because what if I had a 6 here? What would I do? Divide everything by what? 6, and so on and so forth. Step 3, eliminate the constant. The constant was a number without any variable, so that's negative 16. To cancel that, we do the opposite, which is add 16 to each side, and we end up here. So, look up to the screen. Now, we're going to complete the square. You're like, oh, wait a minute. This should ring a bell. Yes, we've been doing this on the warm-up. Look at this part right here. Tell your neighbor what you would write here to complete the square, please. What would I write? Negative 6 over 2. Yes, we do that to both sides. Let's do that together. Write it out, please. Negative 6 over 2 squared. They're like, oh, Mr. Q, yes. That's why I did it, so you can get extra practice. So therefore, to simplify this, this is x squared minus 6x plus 9, is that correct? Equals to 16 plus 9. So, 
can I simplify the uh, the right side a little bit more? Yes. So what is 16 plus 9? 25 equals 2 x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay. So we're done with step 4. That's what we call completing the square. All right. This is the last part. Here we go. Next. Can I factor? Look at the left side. Do you know how to factor this? Oh, yes, Mr. Kier, you use Power Rangers. Or let me show you a shortcut. Ready? Since I just completed the square, that means this is a perfect square. Pay attention to this part, because this, this only works when it's a perfect square. So how can I factor it, Mr. Q? I take the square root of the first, square root of the last, sine of the middle, and write it squared. You're like, what? I know, right? And all that equal to 25. Why was I able to do this writing it squared? Because I just completed the square, yes. And it works every time. All right, so we're done with step five. Let's go to the next step. It says, first thing for step five, it, I mean, step six, it says take the square root. Now look at it. Why do you think I'm going to take the square root? Tell your neighbor, why do you think I need to take the square root? Bless you. Yes, very good, because we need to cancel this square. So I need to take the square root. And what do I do to one side? I do to the other side. This cancels this. I'm left with x minus 3 equals, what is square root of 25? And? Yeah, plus minus 5. 5 times 5 is 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Next. I'm going to solve for x. What do I do to solve for x? Add 3, add 3 to both sides. We end up with x equals 3 plus minus 5. Let me scoot this up for some of you that are way back there. There it is, okay? And last but not least, I'm going to write two equations. Why two equations, Mr. Q? Because this here, x equals 3 plus 5, and x equals 3 minus 5. That is correct. So I'm going to write x sub 1 is 3 plus 5. If you don't see it, here it is, 3 plus 5, which is what? 8. x sub 2 is 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. Where's the minus? Right third. And what are these called? These are my solutions, x-intercepts, zeros, and roots. Is it coming back for some of you? You're like, oh, yes, Mr. Yeah, I think I remember. From one to five, how comfortable are you so far? Five, fours, okay. Let's do another one, yes? Just to get some practice. Here we go. I'm going to leave the steps on the right side just so that you can follow them. Example 1Q, copy this down. x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals y. x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals y. All right, let's do this together. Let's see. Is it in standard form? Guys? Except for equal to? So that means I need to rewrite this. x squared minus 4x minus 12 equal to 0. Once again, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. All right, step one is done. Next, in red, divide the entire equation by the leading coefficient. What's my leading coefficient? 1, so I need to divide by 1. You're like, do we really need to do that for right now? Yes. Step two is done. Step three, tell your neighbor how to eliminate the constant. Eliminate the constant. Yeah, add 12 to each side, add 12 to each side, and then we write x squared minus 14x, leave an empty space, equal to 12. Oh, equal 4x, yes, sorry. Yeah, I did that to see if you were paying attention. Minus 4x, okay? Next, look up. 
Tell your neighbor what to add here to complete the square. What do I add right there? Yeah, negative 4 over 2 squared. Whatever I do to one side, I add to the other side. So, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals to 12 plus 4. Can I simplify the right side? Yes, that's 16. x squared minus 4x plus 4. Next. What else? I'm done with uh, step three and step four. Let's factor. Does everybody remember the shortcut for this one since it's a, a square? What do I do? Square to the first, square to the last, sine of the middle, and write it squared. Equal to 16. We're done with step five. Next. I need to take the square root. Tell your neighbor why do we need to take the square root there? Yeah, because we need to cancel this squared. What is the opposite? Taking the square root. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. We end up with x minus 2 equals plus minus 4. Be careful with that not to forget the plus minus. All right, let's solve for x before we write our two equations. What do I do? plus 2 plus 2, x equals 2 plus minus 4. All right, equation number 1, x sub 1 is what? 2 plus 4 is 6, yes. And equation number 2 is what? 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. From 1 to 5, I'll come to argue with these. Yeah, five, 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 four, okay. Let's do another one. Here it goes. Copy this one. Let's see. Example one. Ah, too easy. Copy this one. Example one mega Q. Negative three x squared plus eighteen x minus fifteen equal to zero. And I'll give you a head start. Copy that and all right, let's see. What do you guys notice on this one? It's a little bit different because now it has a what? A leading coefficient. What else? It's not equal to y. They actually did the first step for us. So step one is done. It is in standard form and it is equal to zero. All right. So what do we do then? Divide by the leading coefficient, which is negative three. Good thing you practice that step, right? So what is negative three x squared divided by negative three x squared? 18x divided by negative 3 is negative 6x, and negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5, and all that equal to 0. Step 2 is done. Eliminate the constant. What do I do? Minus 5 minus 5, we end up with x squared minus 6x, empty space, equal to negative 5. Step 3 is done. What do I write to complete the square right here, Zachary? Uh, Negative 6 over 2 squared. Yes, to both sides. Negative 6 over 2 squared. So we end up with x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals to negative 5 plus 9. What is negative 5 plus 9? 4 equals to x squared minus 6x plus 9. We're done with step 4. How do we factor? Shortcut, yes. Square root of the first. Square to the last, sine of the middle, squared equals to 4. Next, uh, take the square root. Why? Because there's a square there, so square root, square root, x minus 3 equals plus minus 2. I'm going to solve for x first before writing my two equations, so what do I do? I add 3, add 3 x equals 3 plus minus 2. So my first equation is x sub 1, which is 3 plus 2, which is 5. My second equation is 3 minus 2, which is 1. And have you got that? From 1 to 5, how comfortable do you feel with completing the square? Yeah. Is it coming back? Yes. We've done this in the past. I'm just trying to bring it back from your long-term uh, memory. 
Now, let me show you something really quick. Let's say I had a store, an electronic store, and you guys were my peons. And I said, okay, guys, every day this is what I want you to do automatically when you go to the store. Open the door with your key. Go straight to the trash can. Throw away the trash outside. Come back. Open the blinds. Get the speaker out. Put music on so people can know that we're open. Very simple. Okay, question. Let's say you got there one time, you opened the door, you went in, and somebody had already thrown the trash. Are you going to throw the trash again? No, because there's no trash to throw. Which means, check this out. If I was to give you an equation that looks like this, look at it. Don't copy it. Tell your neighbor what steps they already did for us on that one. What steps that did they already do? The first what? The first three steps are already done. So do we need to throw away the trash again? No, it's already done for you. So therefore, we just need to do what? Completing the square. What would we do to complete the square? Add what? 10 over 2, square to both sides, and continue from there. Does that make sense? All right, let's go to your favorite now. Copy this. Quadratic formula. Let's go. Let's go. This is my favorite, right? Am I right or am I right? <laughs> Some of you are like, uh, no. Write this down. Quadratic formula. Hopefully you guys remember, right? X equals minus B plus minus square root. B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Quadratic formula is X equals minus B plus minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2A. What is it? X equals minus B plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. What is it? x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Once again, x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Why didn't we need that, Mr. Q? Because we need to do this one before we leave. Copy this one, example number two. Oh, yes. Some of you were already putting your notebooks away. Really? We have three minutes left. Let's go x squared plus 16x equals to negative 15. And let me write you three simple steps on the right side. Step one, standard form. Step two, I, D, A, B, C. And step three, substitute and solve. All right, so standard form, is it equal to zero? So what do I do? Very good, add 15 to each side. We end up with x squared plus 16x equal to, I'm sorry, plus 15 equal to zero. Okay, step one's done. Identify A, B, and C. What is that, Mr. Q? What is in standard form? AX squared plus BX plus C equal to zero, yes? Yes, Mr. Q. So what is A? 1. What is B? And what is C? All right, once we have that, what do we need that for, Mr. Q? Because X equals minus B plus minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2a. x equals minus parentheses plus minus square root parentheses squared minus 4 parentheses parentheses over 2 parentheses. So let me start with this one. What is this one? b 
So what is B? 16, so 16 goes here and, and here. What is A? A is 1, there and there. And the last one is what? C, which is 15. So we did A, step 1, step 2. What is the last thing to do? Substitute and solve. Do you know what to do from here? Yes, Mr. Q, just simplify. All right, so this is negative 16 plus minus 16 squared is uh, 256, I think, right? 256 minus 60 uh, over 2. Just simplify, simplify, so you come up with your answer at the end. All right, guys, enjoy your home play. That's the lesson for today. Oh, no, the home play was free. Have a good one. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.